stay tuned to the better's edge. As I was going through this team, I came up with a play that I'm going to give you out for free that very well may be a client all access release. I am Ralph Michaels. This is Texas A&M. They are the gold sheet number 13 strongest power rated team for the summer of 2024. Let's start off this video by looking at their odds and what the expectations are for the Aggies. Doing this video July 15th. National championship odds, 45 to 1. Conference odds, 14 to 1. To make the playoff, yes, plus 220. No, minus 300. Season win total sits at 8.5. The over, minus 120. The under, even juice. To go undefeated, Yes, you're getting 10 to 1. No, you're laying 25 to 1. And Connor Wegman, the Heisman, he is listed at 30 to 1. Now let's look back at an ugly, ugly Texas A&M season, which got Jimbo Fisher let go. Didn't matter how much they owed him, they decided they needed to make the change. They went 7 and 6 last year, 6 and 7 against the spread, and 7 and 6 over under. But the stats are sort of surprising. They are not like a 7-16. and 16. Yards per play diff, they were number 38 in the country, plus .77 yards per play. Offense and defense yards per game, number 50 on offense, 19 on defense. Points per game, number 25 on offense, 36 on defense. They did play a weak schedule, only number 52 in the country. When you look at their efficiency ranks in that schedule, they were number 42 on offense and number 17 on defense. A couple things I do want to point out. When they were a favorite, Jimbo Fisher won his games last year. He won all seven games as a favorite of minus six or higher, but they went 0-6 as a dog or one game as a small favorite. So competitive games he lost. When he was a bully, they did win those games. In games decided by eight points or less, they were actually 0-4 in those games. That is a big step up for me, thinking they're going to win a few of those this year. Part of the reason I like the win total I do. And let's also remember, Wegman started the last few games two years ago. He won the job last year. He only started the first four games of the year, was hurt, not for the year. Then what happens? Max Johnson comes in. He makes five starts. He's out for the year. Jalen Henderson starts three games. He gets to the bowl game, throws one pass in the bowl game. He gets hurt, and they need a fourth quarterback to play. Folks, there aren't many teams that are going to have a winning record with four quarterbacks. Another reason I have them up this year. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. We hope you understand that is why over 160,000 people are Wager Talk TV followers. Smash that like button. Make sure you become a member and you'll be notified as soon as we do these videos. And do check out the Gold Sheet. Head to goldsheet.com or head to wagertalk.com. Use the code GS30. That'll get you $30 off a weekly subscription to Gold Sheet. It starts college football week zero. You'll get a weekly issue through the Super Bowl. The oldest and finest football newsletter available. Make sure you. See how improved the gold she truly is. The 2024 Texas A&M Aggies. Well, I said, I mentioned Jimbo Fisher being gone. They go out and bring Mike Elko in. Mike Elko goes and gets Colin Klein, the old K-State quarterback. He was the K-State OC the last few years. He now comes here. And their D.C. Bateman was a Florida linebacker coach the last couple years. They return eight on offense and four on defense. Conley has a number 38 as far as uh, the returning production goes. You see, their, you see their OC and DC. Again, they have their quarterback returning. They have a new head coach, new OC, and new DC. So we'll see how that pans out. 12 returning starters is on the low side. Last year, AM returned 20 starters. And he still only went seven and six because of those quarterback injuries and other injuries. The previous two years, they returned 10 and 15. Players lost to the draft 
They lost four players to the draft only for 14 points. That is right in line with the previous two years. 2023, they lost three players, seven points. In 2022, four players, 17 points. Wegman, as I said, started four of the last five games as a freshman, won the job, started the first four last year. He will be greatly improved in the third year here at AM. They return their top six rushers. They're going to be a strong rush team, folks. They lose their number one and number two. They lose their number one receiver, but return two of their top three and have a lot of depth and a couple good transfers. I actually give them a check mark up in the receivers. The O-line did lose two NFL draft choices, but I'll tell you what, you look at their transfer list. They got two from the Big Ten. They got one from UCF. They got one from Bowling Green. Even though they lost two NFL starters that got drafted, I actually think this O-line is on par or can even be a little better than last year as well. And while we look at the defense, they only returned four starters. They did lose six of their top eight tacklers and 10 of their top 13. The D-line loses three, including an NFL pe- including one NFL draft choice. But folks, their D-line is one of the best in the country. They are deep. They are athletic. They brought in some monster transfers. The linebackers, they only lose one player. It was a number two draft choice. And the DBs are the biggest concern. They lose three defensive back starters, only bringing back one. So like we say often, this defense has potential to be good. The team has potential to be good. It really is going to depend on how the O-line transfers and secondary transfers pan out for Mike Elko. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 2024 Aggie schedule. You see the gray boxes are games between the eights. They have seven of those. When you look at the games between the eights, six are as a favorite. There's only one as a dog. The season finale, they're going to be a home dog. We project them to be a home dog of a three-point of a field goal home dog against Texas. We'll see how close that is. You look at their bye weeks. They go to Mississippi State. They are off a bye. That's a good thing. Mississippi State is off Georgia. A winnable game at home. And they have Arkansas on deck. So they are playing straight series of games. But again, they do have a light opponent. But still, it's an advantage to have the bye. And again, New Mexico State. There's a lot of times we look at buys and we think, the better team is the situation or the power group of five team. When they are off a bye, it's an advantage to them. But I want to point out this. Even though they have a bye against New Mexico State, that may be a situation where New Mexico State could be playing for a CUSA title. They play at Florida International minus five two weeks before. They're home against Western Kentucky as a four-point dog. And they have Middle Tennessee on deck. So why most sandwich spots we consider it to be, ooh, they got a huge power five team. There are times when a group of five team may not put as much effort in to a, a game against an SEC team when they have winnable conference games surrounding it. Just something to keep an eye on when you're looking at the schedule. We finish each team with a better's edge. We only have a couple years of data from Mike Galco. Remember, Mike Galco was at Duke the last two years, and he actually was the D.C. here from 2018 to 2021 under Jimbo Fisher. So he was here for three years under Jimbo Fisher, went to Duke, and he's now replacing Jimbo Fisher. Elko in his two years at Duke, 9-4 and against the spread, 0-2 as a favorite of minus 30 or more. So when he's not laying four touchdowns or must, he has gone nine and two against the spread. Only five and six ATS away, including one and three straight up in ATS as an away favorite. Looking at his highest and lowest totals, with a total of 49 or less, a low total, Elko's teams have actually gone eight, two, and one, 80% to the over. And when we have a high total of 50 or more, they've actually gone four, nine, and one over under. 31%. Now I was breaking down this team, looking what I'm going to give you here 
for my opinion on Better's Edge. And I'm going to the season win total of eight and a half. And I'm going to go over. Again, we talked about them having to play four quarterbacks last year, including three quarterbacks starting at least three games. Plus 74 yards per game in SEC play. That was the fifth best in the conference last year. They were 0-4 in games decided by eight or less. You normally return to at least the median after that type of season. They have five games this year where they're a favorite of minus 14 to minus 50. Let's count those all as wins. They have seven games between the eights at home. They're minus one against Notre Dame, minus three against Missouri, minus two at LSU, and plus three at Texas. So let's be conservative and count two of those four wins. That gives us seven wins. So when they're on the road at Florida, a six-point favorite, at Auburn, a four-point favorite, or at South Carolina, can they win two out of three of those? And if they do, that gets us to nine and will cash a ticket. Again, I'm finalizing this in the next day or two. But if you sign up with me at Wager Talk, the college football and NFL combo, just $777. I already have three college football plays loaded, including a 5% season win total. This may be another play added to the repertoire. Again, we appreciate you and the other 163,000 people that follow Wager Talk TV. Check out all these videos following to join the gold sheet. Top 25.